So, hello. Good afternoon, Europe. Good morning, South America. Welcome, everybody, to this Listo webinar. Uh, we're going to start in a few moments now. I'm going to wait for my colleague, Laura, who is going to join me in this introduction session. There she is. Okay. Laura, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry. Sorry. There you are. Good Hello, everybody. So nice that you can join us. Good. Um, this is um, us. My name is uh, Philip Bauer. I work in the Division for Internationalization at Uppsala University in Sweden. And uh, I am Laura Diaz Arnesto from uh, Universidad Orturuay here in Montevideo. Welcome to this webinar series. We will uh, moderate together the introduction and then we will also show you the whole agenda for the one hour and 15 minutes that we have planned with you. Uh, first, a little bit about the LISTO project. Um, LISTO stands for Latin American and European Cooperation on Innovation and Entrepreneurship. It is or it is, uh, was a capacity building project, Erasmus Plus funded Key Action 2, that was running from 2017 to 2020. We have three main focus areas, that is university industry relation, uh, entrepreneurship education and entrepreneurial university. And uh, we have a webinar series that will introduce you to the results of um, the activities that we did together. These are our partners and Laura will introduce them to you briefly. Yes, we have um, three partners from, from Europe, which are the University of Uppsala, that is the coordinator uh, of, of, the, of the project, the University of Groningen, and the Universidad de Valladolid in Spain. So Spain, the Netherlands, and Sweden from um, Europe. And then our seven partners, universities from uh, Latin America, starting with Brazil, the Universidad Federal uh, de, de Pernambuco, the Universidad Federal, um, my Portuguese is not that good, I'm so sorry, from Rio Grande do Sul y, and um, the Universidad de San Pablo. Then from Argentina, the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba and the Universidad Nacional del Litoral. And from Uruguay, the Universidad Católica del Uruguay and um, Universidad Ort Uruguay from Montevideo, both of them. Since this is the beginning of a webinar series of three webinars in total, uh, we are very honored that the rector of Uppsala University, Eva Okeshon, um, has taken some time to uh, greet us with a short welcome speech. Uh, it is a video that I'm going to play for you. So this is just to launch uh, the whole webinar series uh, with a few words. Benvindos, benvenidos, welcome. A university is by its nature international. Knowledge knows no borders and cannot and should not be withheld. Thanks to the Erasmus Plus platform, we have been able to strengthen our international bonds even further. Over the last three years, our university has been working together with you all within the framework of Erasmus Plus Project Listo to strengthen in entrepreneurship and innovation in Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay. This has been an interesting and educational journey for us all. Working together, together across borders is challenging and sometimes difficult. Different approaches and different perspectives are potentially obstacles that can hinder progress, but they can also, when handled with open minds and curiosity, be door openers to deeper understanding. Three years is a short time in the university's history. 
And I'm really impressed what we have achieved in this period. Today, when you're gathered digitally to sum up and talk about the results, we will have three seminars of which this is the first. On today's agenda are the seven pilot AIM Days events meant to strengthen collaboration between universities and business. In a week, the seminar will concern virtual classrooms and in the last seminar on the 7th of October, we will focus on entrepreneurial universities and how to promote an entrepreneurial spirit. What we have achieved, we have achieved together. We have been successful. Many ideas have worked out well in practice, though they can always be developed further, I'm sure of that. One interesting point that's well worth noting in, in, is in these times, virtual collaboration shows its values. Our experience in the Lister project offers great promise for the future. We are learning together to make the most of new technology in a global context. And one more thing. Today, when you sum up, don't forget that we have started is something more than can be measured in time and in money. And that is friendship. Having contacts in other parts in the world with mutual interest is perhaps the best result we can ask for. Most of the challenges we are facing in the future are global, and the, so the solutions must also be applied and shared globally. How else can we reach our goal and make this world a better place? Thank you. Muchas gracias. Mucho obrigada. Tack så mycket. Thank you, Professor Okeshon, um, for giving us the honor of uh, opening this uh, webinar series. Um, we will now um, show you the agenda of the webinar. Here we go, Laura. So, yes, uh, in this webinar, we will be dealing mainly with our first uh, development work package um, that uh, we call uh, relationships between university and um, industry. So we will have a, a brief explanation of the AIM day methodology as um, Rector Okison has just mentioned. Then we will have the experience from the Latin American events, followed by um, uh, uh, reflections on the AM Day collaboration with um, the Latin American universities. And that will be followed by a 10 minutes Q&A session where you can either ask questions or share uh, comments or reflections on what we just been talking about. Later, we'll go, we have the uh, launching of the Listo AM Day ebook, which is one of three books that the, uh, the project is uh, delivering. And we will finally have a dialogue uh, on collaboration in times of a pandemic, so quite current. And then Philip will be closing the webinar. Here are a few rules for Zoom. I'm sure you're all professionals by now. We've had so much practice in the past couple of months. But just uh, briefly, so the chat function, which you all know, this is more like for communication among participants. So you can chat and introduce yourself. The Q&A is the one where we will ask you to answer, uh, post questions um, after the panel discussions and after the presentations we have. I, as the moderator, will gather those questions, maybe summarize if we get a lot, and then I will direct them at the panelists who will answer the question. I have a co-host, uh, which is my Connie Fanny Jonsson, who is not only here virtually with me, but actually in the same room. Thank you for helping me. 
Um, Fanny will be here to help me also in the background. So if you have technical questions that are concerned with Zoom and uh, how you can change the settings, then you can write her through private message um, in the chat and she can help you out uh, with that. And the last thing, social media. Uh, we have a hashtag Listo project that we use on Twitter and LinkedIn. And we also have a uh, Instagram account as Listo project. So that one you can use when you talk about um, the project or talk about the webinar series. Let's have a quick look at the participant list. We are now have close to 150 participants. We're very happy that you're here. Thanks for your interest. Based on the registration, I can see that we have uh, people from all over the world, not just Europe and South America, but also from Vietnam, Thailand, Azerbaijan, Russia, uh, all the way to Honduras. So we're all sitting in very different time zones and uh, it's great that you took the time to join us. I will now say goodbye to Laura and then I will bring in the first panelist and then we will start the first uh, session. Thank you, Laura. Goodbye. Ah, so sure. So one moment. So I'm now bringing online uh, my colleague Annette Persson Stache. She is a uh, collaboration manager in the uh, innovation office of Uppsala University. Um, she is the one who is running AIM Day events here in Uppsala, and she was the one who did the training sessions uh, within the Listo project. Okay, Annette, are you going to share your own screen for the PowerPoint? Yes, please. Okay, you may do so. You have the rights to do it. Okay. Thanks. All right, can you see me? Uh, uh, can you see the screen and can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Annette Persson Stacke. I work here at Uppsala University Innovation uh, Office. And uh, I'm going to talk about AIM Day for maximum 10 minutes. Um, you who know me and met me, we, you know that we spent about two days uh, talking about AIM Day. Um, so five minutes about this is very briefly about the concept. Uh, I also have some learning points and uh, follow up and how to move forward. So if you want to uh, read more about AIM Day, you see the uh, web address um, here and you can also connect with me later on. AIM Day. It stands for Academic Industry Meeting Day. It all started in 2008 when one of my former colleagues wanted to connect uh, industry with the researchers here at Uppsala University. Sorry, I will just set the time here so I know exactly how much time I have, sorry. Um, so within a specific topic that we choose from the university yeah, we're not sure whether we can see your powerpoint sorry for interrupting you oh sorry you need, to, you need to share your screen yeah i did so that's the, the green button yeah i did so sorry can you see it now here we go great okay sorry about that so i just show the first uh you have the web address here, aimday.se. We go again. So uh, Academic Industry Meeting Day is what AIM Day stands for. We try to, uh, within a specific topic, connect industry or other organizations with, um, with our researchers at the university. So we collect the questions um, from uh, the industry. Um, and then we connect them with researchers and they submit to the raised questions. And we have our own website with registration forms. So the organization, they register, and then we open up a registration for researchers to submit to the questions. Then we have an optimization tool that matches these questions with the researchers' requests. 
and then we end up with a day filled with series, a series of one question, one hour workshops to discuss each topic. And just to show you what it can look like, I have um, printed out from the website. On the left hand side, you can see the aim day materials from last year. You see there is a short um, welcome and introduction in the morning. You see there's a workshop session number one. Uh, and underneath you have four parallel workshops that run during the, the first session with the question, the room number, the company, and also the question. If you click on the read more arrow, you will see all scientists and organizations that register to this question. So during the day, you have several parallel workshops and also several uh, workshops during the day with coffee and lunch in between. On the left hand side, on the right hand side, sorry, you see a program for Mikael Olsson at the below. Uh, so he knows exactly where he's going, which room, what time, what kind of company he's going to meet, what kind of question he's going to discuss. On the top, there is a program for um, the room. You can see all the representatives and the scientists who have signed up for this specific question. And this, when you have done the optimization, decided on a specific um, schedule that you want to have uh, during the day, you can have these PDFs printed out from the system. And we also have training and support, as I said in the beginning, we have a manual for the website and of course, many years of practical experience with this tool. What's in it for me? What's in it for universities? I can't see my slides now, sorry. Um, for the university, increase the positive impact uh, of your university in the society. For academics, it is an opportunity to see where your research can be applied in a real world context. And for organizations, gain knowledge of the latest research technologies and methods in your field of interest. So I think over the day you get to know more people uh, with in between the organizations, but also between the researchers. What we want to have during a day is a day full of meeting, knowledge exchange, and insight to new problems out that are out there in the industry, and also um, the networking. Uh, I often get the question, what is the facts and figures out of a name day? Um, I would say that the purpose and the goal uh, is how we can follow up. And I also think that there are a lot of methods on how you follow up on each university that you can use uh, these tools when you follow up on name day to collect these facts and figures. Also, um, I think from the beginning, uh, the first bullet points here, how to find collaboration opportunities and new innovation opportunities was the main goal. And also uh, for industry, this is opportunity to just um, ask one question and then you spend one hour at the university because we usually have the, the um, event at the campus. So you will save time as a, as a organization or an industry uh, by just posting one question and have one hour session and discuss this topic that you have. But as we have met other university, both uh, in Europe, in Latin America, of course, now, and uh, they will talk about this later on, what they have learned. Um, but I've been spoken to uh, several other universities that use AIM Day and also some universities in Sweden. Uh, one university, they told me that they wanted to connect the researchers with the SMEs that they have uh, around the university. And then the follow-up will be very different 
from the follow-up if you want to find new innovation opportunities or collaboration opportunities. Because if you want to have collaboration opportunities, you might have a pre-study Monday fund, like funding for collaboration. But if you just want to network and see, have people to meet each other, that's a completely different follow-up. Um, I also got some information from another university that they have four other universities in the area and they want to connect the universities but also the researchers um, in between the universities but also in between the different fields within the universities, with the industry. So they used AIM Day as a tool to connect, um, to, ask, to post the questions and then the researchers from different universities and different fields uh, signed up to discuss these questions. So both multidisciplinary and also connecting universities in, in the same in the same aim day. Um, we also know that um, there are sometimes there are bigger calls to apply for that can um, that you need to be um, from different fields at the university, different researchers, but also different organizations and also for industry and maybe public organizations. And, and AIM Day could be an opportunity to connect people from different uh, organizations uh, to meet, to connect, to start talking to each other, to see is, is this a way, do we have a way to move forward to, to a, a call in the future? Long-term uh, collaboration projects, uh, mentors, student projects, visits to organizations, even employment. Uh, Short-term knowledge exchange, networking, and also pre-studies. Time is moving really fast. I just, just have this one more slide and maybe we have time for one question. I don't know, Philip, we see. Moving forward, I think just a moment, that gaining interest from researchers uh, is kind of crucial to set up a name day. It's really hard to ask uh, external organizations to post questions if you don't have any researchers within your university that wants to discuss and wants to collaborate and wants to meet. So we have started to do pre-events to raise more interest and see what kind of topic would be interesting for both external and internal uh, to meet around. So it's a way to choose the right topic. We also have had different faculties here at the university that want to connect with each other and they use AIM Day as a tool and they ask industry about questions and then they sign up for these questions and they connect uh, in between uh, the different faculties. And this is what we want with the, the AIM Day tool. We want to have a multidisciplinary perspective in each discussion. And I just leave this last one here, digital events. You know, I think networking is one of the uh, main goals with, with collaboration. Um, how do we do social networking when we can't, we can't do it for the moment? Uh, uh, what kind of positive and negative consequences does it have to have the digital events um, towards the social networking on physical places? i just leave it there, Philip. Very short. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think we don't have a question so far. The, the audience is welcome to post questions in the Q&A, but we will collect them until, the, until after the next two presentations. I will now bring um, onto the panel two of our Argentinian colleagues. Okay, Anna, then you can stop sharing your screen, please. Sorry, there you go. Okay. 
Here we go. Welcome, um, Oscar and Silvia. Um, Silvia is from um, Universidad Nacional de Córdoba and Oscar from uh, Universidad Nacional del Litoral. Uh, both are from Argentina and uh, they were part of the teams that hosted a pilot AIM Day at their universities. They will give us now an overview into the seven pilot AIM Days that we have and a few examples that will fit very well with the explanation that uh, Annette gave you. Okay, will you share your own screen or do you want me to click? You will share your own screen. Okay, thanks. And you need to unmute. Ready? You can go. Okay, thank you very much, Philip. Thank you for the, the opportunity for presenting this, this part of the, the, the webinar. Uh, it's a, it's a, a great opportunity to, to present to you what, uh, what you, we did last year uh, here in, in Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. The first part, uh, I'm going to present some aspect of the Latin American AIM Day events. And after that, uh, Silvia uh, will present us some examples of um, collaboration between university and industry. Okay, first of all, interactions among the social environment, university and industry are considered essential to promote the development of knowledge-based societies. Therefore, it is essential to generate conditions that foster such interactions. The end day methodology is quite simple and versatile, and it serves as a vehicle to test, analyze, and improve aspects of university industry collaboration in an applied way. This was the rationale of the LISTO project, using MD as one practical tool to develop capacity in developing collaborations. <clears throat> we pursued a three-step approach. First of all, we organized a workshop in Montevideo, Uruguay, during which the Uppsala University Innovation Team trained the seven Latin American partners <clears throat> universities in the M-Day method. In the second step, partners picked a topic relevant for their local context and organized a pilot M-Day. The seven pilot M-Day events uh, which took place are the ones I am showing on the presentation. In the, in the third step, the group of M-Day organizers reunited for a workshop in Uppsala, Sweden, to discuss and evaluate the experience. These seven pilots took place in universities across three countries, <clears throat> Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. It is worth mentioning that the universities from Argentina and Brazil are large public institutions, while the two uh, from Uruguay are smaller and private institutions. Although they are located on the same continent, the culture concerning university business interaction prevailing within each country is considerably different. Analyzing the events across each university offers a broad spectrum of investigating aim days potential as a university enterprise approach method. In general, the organization of each aim day was an important learning process from sensitizing the actors of production chain until the day itself, all the university teams were involved in promoting and product, um, productive and stimulating meeting. We organized our end day around a specific productive chain, but as interdisciplinary as possible. We promoted how the end day event works for both academics and external organizations. Normally, this type of structured approach is not established. Usually organizations directly contact their researchers 
for collaboration on specific, specific situation. Companies are not used to being contacted by the university. The end, they promote the communication to create a positive environment for discussing challenges within this field. The overall evaluation of every pilot was positive, which researchers and industry representatives approving the format and showing interest in future interaction opportunities. In addition to the link established between university researchers and industry representatives, researchers from different schools and different areas got to know each other. This is a very interesting development considering the very compartmentalized structure, mainly in the larger university participating in these pilots. During and after the event, we received some, questions, some requests from other companies about the possibility of participating in other AIM Day events, which indicates that this format is interesting for local companies. We should like to highlight the, the importance of hands of training given by Uppsala University. Although this type of training requires significant investment of time and resources, it is fundamental to get started. The interaction with other institutions that organize similar events reinforces the desire to ensure this event this is successful and represents the university in a positive light. Despite having an established methodology from AIM Day organization, the Uppsala University Innovation Team gave us many opportunities for questioning and also adapting the event according to our local needs. Some significant figures from the events are the, as shown in, in the next part. Number of end day events, seven. Total number of participants, 361. Number of researchers, 132. Number of company or organization representatives are 93. Number of companies and organization, 40. Number of, of questions addressed, 79, number of workshops or, health or session held, uh, 59. Regarding the number of participants, the figure shows the distribution of, polling of the following ca categories. University, researchers, uh, company organization representatives, students, uh, PhD, for instance, guests, authorities, stakeholders, visitors from other universities, and staff such as presenters, moderators, and, and organizers, etc. The results show a total figure of main participants' involvement. Academy researchers and industry representatives of over 60%. Almost all partners reported a larger number of researchers signing in and participating in the, at the end day that in industry representatives from companies or organizations related to the topic of the, the end day. This is the first evidence of sufficient research capacity and interest in collaborating with the industry. Next, uh, Silvia Eisen from the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba show us some examples between the, this type of collaboration. Silvia, please. Hello, I'm Silvia Isa from Universidad Nacional de Córdoba. Uh, I would like to share some examples about a few companies who took part in the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba end day. These companies demonstrated interest in the LISTO project and also some concrete collaborations that are already in place. The first company named Promedom is from Córdoba, Argentina. This company is in the health sector and provides prosthetics and innovative solutions for different pathologies and specialities. Promedon attended two M-Day events in two different countries. The M-Day organized by Universidad Nacional de Córdoba in Argentina and the M-Day held by USB in Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is evidence that collaboration with universities is included in the regular agendas of some international companies. 
The questions submitted in UNCM Day materials were about usability redesign of surgical instruments, scaling up the production process of thin silicon hollow parts, elimination of friction and noise in medical instruments without the use of lubricating agents, anatom anatomical structure modeling, and hydrogel manufacturing process scaling. Four of its senior managers participated in the meetings. After NDA was held, this company expanded existing joint research in four areas of Universidad Nacional de Córdoba. In chemistry, for developing a research and a new product. In design, for modifying existing product. Engineering, for statistics research in biomedicine and dentistry for developing a new product that includes silver on tooth implants. In the other hand, we have Mercado Libre, an Argentine e-commerce company dedicated to purchases, sales, and payments over the internet. This company attended the end day and submitted three questions. They were about credit scoring for unbanked users, financial decision making, and financial behavior. Four agreements about collaboration are being held with different areas in the university nowadays. Language, about a development of natural language processing to predict, predict what people will do through gestures. Software engineering, where two logistics solution agreements are being carried out for the distribution of their products. And recently in economics, a research on statistical data modeling is being carried out. Then they facilitated the change of certain cultural aspects related to a proactive and agile attitude in the way of interacting with the industrial sector. In addition, it facilitated the promotion of high quality interactions with companies, not only with big ones, but also with small and medium sized companies, and established stronger links with other colleagues and with company representatives. Results reveal that all 7M Days events were successfully hosted and rendered very positive responses by participants and organizers. Activities were communicated on partners, websites, social media, and press outlets. Success may additionally be viewed in that some of the universities involved have already repeated the experience, organizes another M days. It was a pleasure for us to participate in LISTO during the three years and to be part of the M day teams. We end this period not only convinced of the potential of interaction between the university and the company, but we have also trained the ability to have friends in other countries. Thank you for everyone. Okay, thank you very much, Silvia and Oscar. We will bring on, sorry? Camera. Ah. Okay, I was talking without camera, here I am. <laughs> Um, thank you, Silvia and Oscar. I will bring on two more colleagues who were involved in this activity. And they will, um, which is Ernesto Gutierrez. He's a colleague of Annette from our innovation office in Uppsala. And Marcelo from Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Porto Alegre. Um, both of them were also involved in this activity, as I said. Uh, while Silvia and Oscar talk more about the specific AIM days, Ernesto and Marcelo will talk briefly about what we learned from this whole collaboration, applying AIM days seven times and using this as a tool uh, to learn from each other and to learn from this practical experience. Okay, you need to unmute your microphones.
Okay, go Ernesto and Marcelo. Okay, should I, should I start or do you want to start Marcelo? I would suggest that you start Ernesto because Marcelo is still figuring okay. it out, so go. Perfect, thank you. So my name is Ernesto Gutierrez uh, and I work at the innovation office at uh, Uppsala University. Sorry, Marcelo. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, very, very badly. Can you hear me? A bit better, but not not perfectly. Try again. Okay, perfect. So I continue. Uh, and uh, I would like to 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 tell everyone uh, what uh, I think we we have learned uh, here in Uppsala University by having participated in the in in the Listo project. Uh, it will be interesting to see what uh, Marcelo has to say. What the uh, uh, the uh, our colleagues in Brazil have learned from, from this project. Um, I think that it was a, a great opportunity to, to have a project with seven universities from Latin America. And uh, then maybe the, the first thing, thing we think is the, the differences between us. Uh, and uh, I would say that there are a lot of differences. Uh, it was nice to see how each university uh, because of different uh, uh, factors uh, it has a different way to understand what the role of a innovation office is and uh, what's the role of a university in a broader inno innovation system is so we see that some of us uh, has uh, gives more weight to for, to, for example social innovations or, or innovations or activities to, to tackle social challenges. Uh, another one gives more weight to maybe technical innovations. Uh, some of us were more with scientists or researchers, another one's more with students. Uh, and there are, all, of course, a lot of differences in the tradition of the universities of working with external actors uh, uh, some of us uh, have a large tradition of working with industry, or other ones is is is, is a new, a new thing, uh, a new way of uh, working. Uh, but uh, the differences are interesting. But but what we have in common is also very interesting. Uh, and uh, when we were in uh, Uppsala, when we when we met the whole the whole team, we invited. Uh, project leader from a big project, a collaboration project that exists in Sweden about antibiotics, uh, a way to rationalize the use of antibiotics in, in health, in the health sector. And it's a project where uh, national agencies, hospitals, universities, the pharmaceutical industry uh, 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 work together to try, trying to make a better use of uh, antibiotics. And this project leader didn't talk about how, how, how nice it, it, it works, but he told us how difficult it, it was to organize this big collaboration project, how different interests, uh, interesting interests of the different actors, uh, the fights, the discussion, the, 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 the situations that it seems to be impossible to, to agree in, in, in the focus of the of the projects, the difference between academia and industry and, and uh, uh, the public organizations. And I think it was very nice to see that, that some challenges are more or less universal, that uh, doesn't work too much better in Europe than in Latin America, than maybe the preconceptions uh, <laughs> uh, could lead to, to think. So, 
it was very nice to, to also organize some kind of workshops focusing on the challenges that we have in common. Uh, for example, uh, uh, how to, to evaluate collaboration. Uh, uh, how to how to evaluate collaboration is in some way a, a precondition uh, uh, for something could happen in the future. Uh, we meet, we try, try to trust, to build trust to, to each other, uh, try to find something in common and maybe something would happen later on. Uh, so to, to evaluate uh, an effort that the results could be seen long time in the future is a challenge and we don't know exactly how, how to do it. And it was very nice to, to, to discuss this common challenge in the list of projects with the other universities. Uh, another common challenge is uh, the multidisciplinary uh, collaboration, how to succeed in, 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 in to integrate in the same project uh, people who have different backgrounds or scientists from different disciplines to, to try to, to give different perspectives for resolving uh, a common challenge. So uh, just for, for, for finishing this uh, uh, brief um, uh, summary of what we have learned, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we that the university was have the role to to teach others about aim day but i think that we have learned uh, how how to learn i would say we have learned how to build up a project with other universities with the grounded in the principle that everyone has something to teach to others and everyone has something to learn from others and I think we have all the universities participating in LISTO have succeeded in, in organizing this kind of projects. So, Marcelo. Yeah, here I am. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm so sorry about this technical problem. Well, then I, I, I had to move to my mobile. I cannot even see myself, but uh, let's go. Let's improvise uh, with the resources that we do ha have. Well, I would like to say a few words. Um, a former mate of mine used to say that most times people misuse the word, uh, the word obvious. Uh, and why that? Because if something is obvious, no further explanation about that thing is needed, right? I confess that the first time I got in touch with the AMD concept, I thought it was obvious. Okay, this is not uh, meant to be controversial. You're gonna see uh, next. But I learned in the field, not only in the classes about the, the, the AMD concept, the methodology, the agents, that it's not, it's not obvious at all. And uh, it's a simple concept, this is true. Uh, what's, what is, is not the same as being uh, an obvious concept. Uh, now I know that. Why, uh, and after all, why uh, it's not obvious? Uh, well, in my modest opinion, because it's a deep concept uh, that brings together different perspectives, different views of the same physical world that are, through a single question, challenged, converge, to find a common place and make the magic of true connections to become real. We are dealing, in fact, uh, with the AIM Day concept with mindset, culture change. The question itself is just the means, the way to achieve the final goal of connecting companies, industries, and researchers, faculties. As you can realize, Ernesto and all the guys that are uh, attending this meeting, I didn't miss my philosophy classes, right? <laughs> But the question, unfortunately, I couldn't hear you uh, at the beginning of this dialogue, of this chat. Uh, my question for you is that, did I miss the in day classes? Did I miss important concepts or they do converge with my philosophy classes? Uh, you asked me what, what did you miss in the, in, yeah, they were very interesting uh, presentations, but um, um, 
we 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 can tell you uh, uh, after this meeting what what they were about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So I guess that I, I'm not crazy and I didn't miss my in-day classes, right? The, the main concepts are in my, in my report on my experience, the experience that I lived uh, during the three uh, aim days that we uh, uh, ran in Urgis. Uh, I'd like to, to, to um, bring the attention to other two points because we, uh, we, this is a very short event, of course, and uh, there are some points, key points that will not be addressed uh, along this dialogue or even during the, the whole meeting, right? But I think that uh, uh, from my experience in Urgis, um, I realize that two uh, agents have uh, a major role uh, in the success of the aim day methodology. Those are what I call the headhunter the guy or team that bring, uh, brings the right companies and the right researchers and maybe the right questions to the workshop. And also the moderator of the meeting uh, uh, of the company with the researchers. Do you agree with me? Because the, after all, they are the guys that uh, build that connection or that help building the connection. Uh, among all those agents. Okay, I think the question was for, for Ernesto. For um, me. Yes, okay. Just let me cut in for the audience. Now is the time to ask questions. We have a few minutes um, to address them. So put your questions in the Q&A and then we will direct them um, at the panelists. Ernesto, you have a quick moment to respond to Marcelo, and then we will take questions if we get some questions. Please, Marcelo, can you ask me again your question? Yeah, what are your thoughts about the, the rules that the, the um, agents, what I call the headhunter, that's the guy or the, the team that brings uh, the right companies and the, the right researchers yes. and the right questions, the workshop, and also what about the importance of the moderator in yeah. the, 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 this process of building this connection yes. among yeah, those I, that meet in the workshop. I think that when organizing uh, an aim day, this, we call it sometimes a matchmaking activity. So as you say, Marcelo, the role of the people organizing aim day is to collect relevant challenges from industry, but also match them with the relevant people inside the university. That could address or, or discuss in a, in a relevant way with industry representatives. And the moderator, as you said, uh, especially when there are several uh, persons in a session discussing the question of the industry, sometimes are people from different, different disciplines, sometimes are senior professors and younger PhD students or students. And the moderator has the, the role, as, as we know, to to make everyone <laughs> uh, participate and to allow everyone to ask questions, to say something. So I think it's, a, it's both roles, uh, as you say, Marcel, are very, very, very important for a successful uh, aim day meeting. Okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Marcelo and Ernesto. We have two questions now and I would like to direct them uh, to the panel. So we have Flavia, she's asking, how other universities can participate in the next AIM day. And we have a question uh, from Brazil, whether Listo is open to participation for other Brazilian universities. So uh, maybe Ernesto or Nanette, um, can you maybe elaborate briefly uh, sort of how AIM day works? And um, the idea is that it is hosted by a university and then the university uh, invites other participants. Maybe you can explain that briefly. Yes, and maybe Annette is the best person to, to explain how, how it's possible to, to use the in the uh, tool. Very briefly, um, each university that wants to uh, use AIMDE as a tool um, sign, a, sign an agreement with Uppsala University. But we always say that if there is an AIMDE somewhere, that you are interested in. There is an AIM Day materials coming up, which uh, Inesto is hosting here in October. If there's a researcher uh, who is interested in uh, 
participating in one of the sessions, uh, it's possible to, uh, to uh, sign up for, for this uh, discussion. Now, when it's digital, it's very easy maybe to connect, but otherwise it's always on site uh, and then it's more difficult. Did that answer the question? The site Anet is in the dot uh, s a e c. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we will show the website in the end. And Lucas Sousa was asking whether Listo uh, is open for participation of other Brazilian universities. So the thing is, the Listo project ends, but the Listo partners will keep working together. So if you want to find out more about AIM Day uh, in a specific Brazilian context, you could just contact one of the Brazilian partner universities, and I'm sure they will be happy to, to talk to you and give you uh, some information. Um, there's one more question. Um, is there a way to participate as an independent researcher? My university does have a partnership with the LISTA project. So can independent researchers participate in an AIM day? Uh, I would say that that is, that is possible. Uh, uh, is, what is not possible is to maybe uh, receive financing from Uppsala University to make what we call pre-study with the with the industry because uh, some some financing must go to uh, uh, people for, uh, teachers and scientists from uh, Uppsala but it would be possible to participate in the discussions of the questions uh, uh, we try to to match with the right uh, background. Uh, uh, we was, we used to say that it's not a conference; it's more a, a conversation. So it, it must be an interesting uh, and a and a relevant background to to participate. But it's possible, of course. You can ask us. Okay, thank you very much. We will close the Q and A now. I will bring in now another colleague from Sao Paulo, Lilian Carete. One way to find out more about AIM Day itself, about the methodology, about the experience we had in Listo, is a publication, um, which we're officially launching today. And uh, Lilian um, will talk briefly about um, the book that will be available as of today. Lilian. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, we are very proud to announce the launch of this ebook. That is the University Industry Co Corporation in Latin America. It refers to the lessons that we learned from applying the AIM Day methodology in Latin America. So it describes the experience from the seven universities that participated, implemented the AIM Day. Uh, experience methodology in our countries, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. So the book consists of five chapters in addition to the introduction and conclusion sections. Well, the first sections refer to the theoretical background, the literature review regarding the co cooperation between university and industry to solve technological problems and reach solutions to difficult problems in the society. The second one, Accelerating Innovation, describes the methodology of the MD. The third chapter refers to the description of the case studies applied to each of the seven universities. So it describes how uh, it was implemented in each of each university. This chapter fourth refers to the quantitative analysis. It brings together the whole numbers of all the case studies and all the experience that was implemented in the universities. And finally, the, the last chapter, the fifth chapter, refers to the qualitative analysis. It brings together all aspects regarding the implementation of the, the AMD methodology. Well, we are very proud that we are reaching it and letting it available to the ones that is interested to, uh, uh, to consult that book. It can be consulted, it can be um, very um, rich to people that works in cooperation between university and the industry, and in addition 
to that executives that work in companies uh, in the innovation department or uh, research and development department can be reached to understand how you could implement or approximate from universities and still to uh, innovation agents or from universities that have the opportunity to understand the methodology and the results that can be achieved from uh, the end day presentation. So thank you very much and I expect you can uh, achieve some results implementing the end day methodology. So we have these three versions in English, in Spanish and Portuguese. And here we have the link to to achieve uh, and access the, this ebook. Thank you very much. Okay, so as Lilian pointed out, the book itself will be available or is available in three language version, thanks to the Erasmus Plus program. This is one of the missions also that it supports multilingualism. So we're very happy to have this not only in English, but also in Spanish and Portuguese. You can see the website, the URL where the book is available. Right now, we only have the English version uploaded. The Spanish and Portuguese versions will follow in the next couple of days, but listoproject.eu slash resources you will find already the English version and uh, it is some 80 pages with a lot of information that will hopefully make you more interested and answer some of your questions. We are very well on time. Thanks for all the panelists for sticking to the time slots. We have one more session now. Now the thing is AIM Day is an event that is really based on people, people uh, meeting in a room, sitting around a table, having a coffee break together and really getting to know each other. We're living in different times now with the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're all going virtual and we need to think about new ways of collaboration. We need to think about how do we use and modify the tools that we have available at the moment to do similar things virtually and maybe also internationally. So we will have a short session that is meant to give us a little bit of a perspective or an outlook on uh, maybe solutions for the situation that we are in now. I will bring in two new panelists and once I've done that, I will introduce uh, all three of them together. One moment. Okay, the panelists um, are Ernesto Gutierrez, who you met already, who is talking already. The second one is Enrique Topolansky from the Center for Entrepreneurship Innovation, Universidad Ort Uruguay. And the third panelist is Sara Goldberg. She's the operations manager at Agencia Nacional de Investigación e Innovación, short ANI in Uruguay. ANI is the National Innovation Agency in Uruguay. We're very happy um, that Anna is with us because ANI was an associate partner in the project. Uh, we had a project meeting two years ago in Montevideo and uh, ANI was very kind uh, to host us. So thank you very much. We're also very happy that you will join us again now that we conclude um, the project. Um, all three panelists will give brief statements, brief presentations about a way to deal with this new situation that we're in now. Uh, we will start with Ernesto, then Enrique, and then uh, Sarah Goldberg will speak um, at the end. So Ernesto, go ahead. Do you hear me? Yes. Because I cannot uh, set on my camera. Okay, that's probably because my, my PowerPoint is shared, but we can hear you. Okay. And perfect. we can also spotlight you so people can see you. Thank you. Uh, and I, I was to, I, I guess at the top one uh, uh, is within, to, to give a, a good example of how to tackle uh, uh, Corona uh, with innovation. But I was, I would like to reflect about how we at Uppsala as an innovation office uh, experience uh, the situation when we we ourselves were forced to innovate 
our way of working. And we are supposed to be the ones who, who knows uh, about uh, innovation. We are supposed, supposed to be the ones who, who are experts in innovation processes and to support others and to teach others about that. But when the corona crisis came, we, we were there uh, uh, asking ourselves, what, what are we going to do now? And uh, uh, the first we, we did was uh, nothing. We were uh, paralyzed, we were uh, confused, uh, uh, and, and uh, we were talking about doing the same things we have planned before to do in the same way we have planned to do. Uh, 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 and 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 we we were we 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 knew that we had to do something, but we 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 didn't know what to do. And uh, then one of us, uh, his name is Harris. He was some kind of uh, entrepreneur, and he said, "We we I I want to do something different. I want to contact all the people that want that know something in the university and wants to do something." no matter what, what it is, and try to put them in some kind of digital platform and try to find common common uh, themes and common uh, uh, challenges that they can tackle. And, and he did something. And he did that first very informally, uh, and then the project was formalizing and he get uh, support. And uh, I think that it was very nice uh, to see ourselves innovation professionals in the situation of uh, 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 a big change in the in the world and uh, how difficult it was for us to to innovate our own ways of working uh, and i think the, this corona crisis made us i would say a, a wiser and maybe more humble about uh, how, how difficult it is to innovate and what what we call innovation capability really means this 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 power and this capability to to react and to adapt yourself to the to the changes in the environment to respond uh, uh, respond to them so this it was a little reflection about uh, an innovation office trying to innovate itself so Okay, thank you, Ernesto. We go over to um, Enrique Topolansky from Ort Uruguay, who will introduce an example that sort of comes out of the Listo collaboration, actually. Hi, Philippe. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Enrique Topolansky, the head of the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center at Ort University. And I want to tell you about a story of collaboration, a story of how to deal with the coronavirus crisis. And the story began because a group of entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs say, we have to do something to try to deal with this situation. And we try to apply the, the different tools and methodology we know to collaborate between universities, organization, private sector. And that was the beginning of a great idea. The great idea was a hackathon. We call the hackathon the COVID-19. And it was a, a hackathon online. The purpose of this hackathon was create solutions to tackle the social problems caused by the pandemic. And it was amazing the response we have. We invite more than 10 private organizations to submit challenge, to present the different problems they have to face the pandemic. After that, we decide to invite different partners. And we invite partners uh, that we know uh, thanks of LISTO program. And in LISTO program, we know different universities around South America. And that was the reason we decided to, to invite the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba uh, and together with the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba, Universidad Ort Uruguay, and Fundación Da Vinci, designed to move forward and invite different people from around South America to tackle the challenge. Uh, it was amazing because we finally have more than 1,500 people involved try to solve this challenge. And people from more than five countries participate in the uh, hackathon. Uh, 
finally, we have more than 100 ideas, proposals, and we work together, uh, we give advice, coaching, uh, to move the ideas forward to the market. As a result of this challenge, now we have two amazing projects that are working to help social problems, to, to make solutions for the social problems we have at the coronavirus. And this is part of the story that, that happened uh, in Listo Project. Listo Project is more than the, the things we saw that presented the AMD, the ideas. We have a, a strong network of uh, stakeholders that we can work together for different purposes. And this is an example that we do with the hackathon, the hack COVID-19. That's all, Philip. Okay, here we go. I said, thank you, Enrique. Um, we see that there's a lot of good people with a lot of ideas out there. Uh, the question is how you can fund those ideas. I think this is something where an organization like Ani comes in and we're very happy that Sara can share an example um, of the program they have now started to support um, uh, universities and companies when they have ideas like this. So the floor is yours, Sara. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, Philippe. Uh, Topo, can you turn off your presentation? Now you can share. Excellent. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to invite us to tell you what we did and what are, we are doing now in these days, uh, trying to face the coronavirus uh, crisis. Uh, like Philip said, my name is Sara Goldberg. I am, I am the COO of ANI. ANI is the National Agency for Research and Innovation in Uruguay. We, uh, we do a lot of things. We give funds to researchers, startups, MIS, to do different kinds of projects. And we took a really a, an important uh, role in this crisis. During this crisis, uh, you are sharing or I am sharing because here. We, uh, what we did, we, design and we generate different uh, instruments to uh, address the principal needs that our uh, beneficiaries had uh, in front of COVID. We harvest the, the great accumulation that in Uruguay we had uh, based on researchers, fellows, startups, uh, different kind of, of Smith. We took a lot of uh, actions for middle and long term uh, facing and trying to give more sustainability to our uh, companies. And we adopted different kind of uh, measures to uh, front the, the crisis. So, uh, we support challenges. What kind of challenges? We try to do a different things, trying to entertain and support the, the people during the quarantine, during this social isolation. In the first day, like Ernesto said, we didn't know what to do. We are really uh, shocked, so we think we have to do things not only in the way to uh, support researchers and in the way to support uh, SMEs, uh, in the way to support people uh, abroad. No? We make uh, other uh, challenge to uh, that it was uh, allowed to people to present different kinds of application and physical advice that solve different issues related with the corona crisis. And we 
try to consolidate the different capabilities that we had uh, related with researchers, SNEs, and universities that work together. We try to put these three different actors together to do different kind of kits and tests. And we work with other kind of, of challenges. So we launched six different challenges. One to uh, build, to design and build diagnostic tests. This challenge was won by a, by a complex uh, kind of arrangement because here we have the Institute of Pasteur of Montevideo, here we have the University of the, de la Republica, la Universidad de la Republica, and a startup related with biotech, and the three parts work together and could have in less than 30 days uh, a certain uh, quantity of tests designed and built. This was really a, a big challenge, not only for us, for any, uh, instead for all these actors. Uh, what I said before, we, we launched a challenge related to creative solution to address uh, the COVID, to help to, uh, to take the, the crisis. We, we launched our uh, challenge uh, who was aligned uh, to design or production of ventilators. Here we have a problem that was related with the regulu regulu regulations, and that's, I think, that is a bigger problem in our country and in our region instead. And what I said, the, the apps and physical devices, serological tests, it was an other challenge. And now we are, we just communicate the results of an other challenge that we launched that was related to study what is the uh, impact on the entrepreneurial ecosystems. And we want to take that, that studies to design a new uh, kind of instrument related to the resilience of the SMEs and the, and the startups. In related with this six challenge, in two months, we have received 187 proposals and we give funds to 33 projects. That is really a, a big uh, quantity. Uh, we put 25 million pesos, but we moved 10 million pesos more. So instead we moved 35 million pesos to these 33 solutions. So uh, what is the, the main goal that we, we took and we play is mediating the between the role mediating between all kind of institutions researchers universities means startups that they have to work together to uh, face this crisis and to build the different solutions for the challenges it was a big effort, not only for ANI, it was a big effort for all the ecosystem to give different solutions. All the people was really involved and they face all the crisis, the crisis with the more innovative solutions and ways. And we are a, 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 an agency that we are thinking that we have to do now uh, new plans to face the middle and long term uh, consequences of this crisis, and we are well, uh, working on it. So that's what we did in these past six months. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Sada. I would like to ask you to put a link to this program into the chat so people can maybe read up a little bit later um, to, to see uh, what this is about. Okay, thanks a lot for your contribution. It was great that you could join us. Thank okay, you we have reached the, the end of our seminar. Um, I will now go back briefly to um, my PowerPoint to show you how we can stay in touch. Um, a lot of the questions that uh, you ask in the chat and in the Q&A is, how can I join an AIM day? So I think that was the, the most common question. Um, I think uh, the most easiest way to find out more is read the ebook that you find on our website, uh, listaproject.eu and then slash resources. The ebook has all the summaries, all the introductions, and also how to get in touch with people. It will show you who the seven AIM Day organizing teams were in the partner countries. And if you are in the same country, or in the same city, I think you're very welcome to get in touch with them to find out more and see if there's a way to collaborate. For more questions, you can also go to aimday.se, which is the main website of AIM Day. We have a project email, listo at uadm.uu.se. Uh, this will land with me. So if you have a question about anything that is related to the topic of this webinar of the project, you can contact me and I will find the right person from our consortium uh, to um, answer your question. We have an Instagram account and you can also find us on Twitter and on LinkedIn with the hashtag Listo Project. I would like to thank uh, all the panelists, all my Listo colleagues and friends who participated to this. You've seen that we have a very engaged group of people. And as um, Enrique Topolansky mentioned, um, the Listo collaboration has become something bigger than just the work packages that we did together. Um, and this is not the end of the webinar series. This was just webinar one. Next week, we will present to you another example, which we're very proud of, an international virtual classroom for entrepreneurship that deals with sustainability issues. This is something that was co-created by the whole consortium. And if you want to know more, um, join us again, same time next Wednesday. And then in two weeks, we'll have the third edition, um, which is dealing with the topic of entrepreneurial universities. So the whole idea of strategies and how we can foster a spirit of entrepreneurship in the universities. For that, you can sign up um, on, on the website, listaproject.eu slash webinars, and then you will receive uh, the Zoom link. Make sure to check your spam folders. I think some people said that the email landed in the spam folder, so make sure that you check so you get the link. For today, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Thanks a lot for your interest. And um, I leave it at that and say, uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.